now, let's get instant analysis of Game 1 from our basketball guru and the man who infamously predicted that the Spurs would get swept by Golden State sa ating settling the score we're with Rexona, the hoop not Enzo flow. So you were correct. Sa iyong uh, prediction, bring Vincent out the brooms. Matamba. Yeah. So <laughs> ganon din ba ang prediction mo dito sa final series after watching game number one? Very tempting, Anton, because Golden <laughs> State was just really very dominant, especially in the second half of game one today. But you, you can't discount the fact that Cleveland is a very good team. Mm -hmm. I, to me, they're a deeper team than Golden State, and they have the best player on the planet, LeBron James. So I don't think they'll allow themselves to get swept. And I know a lot of people are probably thinking of that S-word right now because of just how badly the Cavs were beaten. But these are the, the defending champions. And again, they have LeBron James, they have Kevin Love, Kyrie Irving. There's so many weapons to be able to get at least one or two games in this series. But having said that, I think it's, I think it's pretty clear that the Warriors I know, are, are just too full of star power, too good. And when they want to, they're, they're practically unbeatable. And so, kada taon ginagawa natin to, binibigay natin ang ating mga predictions yeah. for the NBA Finals. So let's just put it out there, dito sa simula ng final series. I'm predicting <laughs> Golden State in six. Uh, unlike last year, I went with the Cavs in seven. The reason why I'm going for Golden State in six is because they were 3-1 last year. And then you add a Kevin Durant, who in my opinion, is the third best player in the world behind LeBron and Steph Curry. So para sa akin, that's more than enough to turn the tide and swing it in favor of the Warriors. Ikaw naman, ano ang prediction mo? I, I'm going the same way. I know a lot of people are picking the Warriors to maybe sweep, or like, like our, our friend, Adrian D, he's picking the Warriors in five. I'm yep. picking the Warriors in six as well, Anton. I think that the Cavs will be able to defend their home court uh, in games three and four, probably. But after that, you know, I think the Warriors are just going to be able to kick things into overdrive. And their desire, one, to give KD his first title, and mm -hmm. two, to exercise the ghosts of last season, I think those two things are really going to play big into how well the Warriors are going to close this one out. I don't think they're going to take anything for granted. Mm -hmm. I think mentally they're going to be tougher than last year. I don't think we're going to see anybody on that team get thrown out or ejected or anything like that. And I think their eyes are on the prize. Uh, they're much more focused. And Game 1 is proof of their determination to get to the top again. When I was watching game number one earlier with Coach Ronnie Magsano, ang napansin ko sa first half na binago ng Golden State na kanilang plan of attack. They're known as a jump shooting yes, and three-point yes. shooting team. But at the end of the first half, ang points in the paint ng Golden State, 42. Ang sa Cleveland, 16 lamang. Did you expect this coming in? Oh, definitely not. Like what you said, Antoine, it's a three-point shooting team. And Golden State is just so dangerous from the perimeter. And I think that's what Coach Tai Lu tried to key on in that first half for Cleveland, to defend the three. But the uh, drawback or downside to that was they left the lane wide open. And I think eventually Golden State was wise to that plan of Cleveland. So they had a lot of back cuts. They had a lot of uh, open driving lanes. And KD, uh, even Clay Thompson, they took advantage of those driving lanes and made a lot of buckets uh, around the basket. We saw Zaza Pachuli, even Jamil, JaVale McGee, mm -hmm. they got a lot of easy shots, you know, around the basket in that first half. And again, that's, a, that's proof of how well Golden State was able to adjust to the game plan of the Cavs and credit to the whole team, especially to a very underrated coach, see Mike Brown. So, pareha tayong Golden State, let's try to see kung ano yung naging pagkukulang ng kupunan. Steph Curry and KD, they did their thing. KD had 38, Steph Curry yeah. had 28. But Draymond Green did not score in the first uh -huh. half. Nakuha niya ang kanyang unang field goal in the third quarter. Eto namang si Clay Thompson, just six points. He continues to struggle here in the playoffs. Is this a concern moving forward for Golden State? Well, I, I don't think so. Uh, Mike Brown said post-game na parang they've got all the scoring that they need from both KD and Steph Curry, who combined for 66 points, and that's good enough for like three players already. And if you're Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, you don't look at the, the box scores and look at the, the points. You look at other stats, or you look at other factors. Kanina, I saw a stat where Cleveland only made one bucket when Klay Thompson was defending the shooter, or defending mm. the scorer. And for me, that's a, that's a bigger stat than whatever score line he got for the game. Klay Thompson and Draymond Green are there not to be the primary scorers for this team, at least not when KD's there. They're there to 
play other roles, to play good defense, get rebounds, frustrate the players on the other team. And in that respect, I think they were able to do their job really, really well in game one. So, napansin natin na Clay Thompson is focusing on the defensive yes, end. Yes, very much and so. And he, he may be exerting a lot. I mean, it's not easy to stay in front of a Kyrie oh, Irving, yeah. right? All right, now let's switch over to the Cleveland side and try to see kung saan pa sila uh, kailangan mag-improve para makabawi dito sa series na ito. LeBron James did his thing. Kyrie had his numbers. Kevin Love had 21 rebounds but only 15 <laughs> points. And Tristan yes. Thompson had no points yeah. and just four, four rebounds. rebounds. Ano yes. nangyari dito kay Tristan Thompson? Well, uh, I think he was just uh, negated by the, the, the length and the aggression of the of the uh, Golden State front line. Uh, he was really just unable to match um, the athleticism of, of the other frontliners from Golden State. You see, Anton, over the course of this postseason, yeah. Cleveland has never faced a team like Golden State. Mm -hmm. You know, they've they've gone through Indiana and Toronto and Boston are all good teams, but they're nowhere near the finals version of the Golden State Warriors. Mm -hmm. Heck. This Warriors team is much better than last year's Warriors team. Yes. And you know, that alone explains why the discrepancy is so big, you know, was so big between these two teams in game one. Cleveland was still able to out rebound Golden State 59 to 50. Mm -hmm. That's still a nine rebound difference. But even that's not enough. If you turn the ball over 20 times and you only force four turnovers on the Warriors. At the end of the day, uh, Cleveland, I think, just made too many mistakes. They missed too many shots. They shot only about 30. 2% or 33% from the field and when you shoot like that and turn the ball over 16 more times in Golden State, no chance you're going to win. Pag nakakausap ko yung mga Cleveland fans or yung mga tao nagsasabing Cleveland is going to win this series, ang lagi nila sinasabi sa akin, we've got the best player in the world. We've got King James and yes, LeBron has that X factor na kaya niyang buhatin ang kanyang kuponan. But the thing is, sapat ba yun? para makakuha pa ng ilang mga panalo at possibly win this NBA Finals Series. What more can LeBron give to the Cavs to come out victorious? I think this is going to be a big test for LeBron. Maybe the biggest test ever in all the Finals Series he's played in. And that he will be productive, I think, is a, is a given already. But the challenge for him will be able to parang pigain yung teammates pa niya lalo. And that's how that's the gauge of how special he can be in, in this series right here. He's going to have maybe a couple of 30-point games. Um, he's going to have a lot of uh, scores and assists and rebounds and all those things. But if he can't bring out the best in guys like Kyle Korver, mm -hmm. who we hardly felt earlier today, Deron Williams as well, Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, he has to be able to bring out the best in these guys. And, you know, that's the only way they can, you know, win four games out of the next six against, you know, Golden State. And uh, frankly speaking, uh, I don't see that happening. Exactly. Very quickly, Enzo, ano ang asahan natin sa game number two? I think that uh, Cleveland will come out much stronger. Mm -hmm. uh, they were able to stick with Golden State for a whole half in game one. I think game two will be much closer than, than game one, definitely. But I think uh, it'll take a bit more time for them to completely solve or slow down the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors are on a high right now. They've mm -hmm. won 13 straight in the playoffs. KD is so confident right now. But mm -hmm. anybody that Cleveland throws at him, he's just salivating and he's just he just feels he can score on anyone, even LeBron James. And when you're up against Kevin Durant, nagkanoon ka confident. Uh, good luck na lang sa So I think I think game two is going to be much closer. But I think the end result will practically be the same. Golden State pa naman din. You still don't want to say bring out the brooms? Uh, no, no, no. I don't want to. I don't want to count out the Cavs too, too much, too much. All right, there you have it. Hoop not Enzo Flow back here on the score. Thank you so much, Sir Enzo. See you again. Hi guys, keep watching the score for the latest sports updates, and don't forget to subscribe to the ABS-CBN Sports in Action YouTube channel.